So, as I mentioned before, this is uh, Jan Fredrik, uh, uh, a really good friend of mine and uh, a former colleague on and off for several years. And he, he's the guy I turn to each time I need something analyzed and I need some uh, code to do it. Uh, he, he, uh, he tends to enjoy the, all the challenges that, are, that I'm throwing at him. As an example, the heat maps, uh, he did that like in less than 24 hours. Uh, when I asked him to do it, oh, very nice guy. Uh, and now he's going to do a talk uh, named "The Problem with Users." And honestly, like always, uh, he always disagrees with me. No, I don't. And um, <laughs> <laughs> once again, <laughs> he had been practicing that one. Yeah. Uh, but uh, he, he, Jan Felix is uh, on a personal note. He is the absolutely best guy I know to debate anything just by principle he will disagree with you and he's really really good at making sure that you have actually thought through everything you're saying before you do it so uh, this is Jan Fredrik and please welcome him right like you said my name is up there um, I work for a company called Datametrics, a Norwegian company. We specialize in you know, computer networks, data centers, uh, security, that kind of stuff. I'm a senior consultant uh, in the security field. That's my professional email if you want to you know, do anything professionally related. Uh, if you just want to shoot the breeze, uh, that's my Twitter handle, my email address, link to you know, find me, that kind of stuff. Right. Um, so this whole thing starts back in the noughties. Uh, uh, me and Per was doing, uh, well, he was doing password auditing for a rather large company. And I was helping him out with the analysis. Uh, there was about 2,500 uh, Active Directory accounts uh, he was analyzing. He had cracked about 93.5% of them. And um, so this is just a precursor to what's going late. Uh, later, I have to explain the, the back, back story here. Uh, they used, uh, I think it was a fairly standard password policy, minimum eight characters, uppercase, lowercase, digits. And uh, for this uh, speech, the important thing is uh, there was a change every three months. Speak up, please. Uh, I presume this was a standard setting, uh, I guess. I don't know. I can't really recall. Uh, but what's, what was interesting was that they had a fairly substantial uh, password history available. Uh, so I was looking at these uh, password histories, and, and uh, I discovered these long sequences of passwords that looked like this, uh, starting, well, basically the same password when with the uh, numbers change and it was again and again and again and it was the same thing and oh here's always the uh, Lord of the Rings fan um, but sometimes these chains were what I call radically broken they were just suddenly there was a password that didn't, didn't follow this trend at all and I was curious uh, as to why change sorry they change your girlfriend uh, it might be yeah uh, yeah. Th there was a lot of. <laughs> <laughs> well, he changed his protege, didn't he? <laughs> well, there, there, it turned out there were two apparent reasons uh, for these changes. Uh, one is rather uh, obvious. Um, uh, and uh, anyone care to guess, by the way? What, what would the reason be for ch suddenly changing this radically? Uh, when you get to the end of the password history, you start again. Uh, no, that's not a radical change. Oh, okay. <laughs> to be hacked. Uh, any hands? Picking something, uh, maybe an event or a month or something, rather than sort of continuing the same thing. Uh, you've forgotten the password, uh, or it has been blocked after a holiday, and you have to reset it. Pierre, give that man a chocolate. <laughs> that's exactly what happened. Uh, what we saw was I'll that. Give him one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he needs. <laughs> I'll, I'll eat the rest. Because 
It turns out, we, we actually recognize this, because uh, whenever they, people forgot their password, they would call help desk, and the help desk would reset the password to a super predictable password. Uh, and that's how we spotted that. Now, there's a second thing that was going on, uh, which I would like to, I think I just call it circular password changes. Uh, and uh, uh, since anecdotal evidence is the best kind of evidence, I'd like Pierre to relate a story about this. Yeah. And uh, some have heard this story before, because I've told it many times, that there are so many new people in the audience. And I went to a colleague, uh, I said, I need some, a little bit of code programming from you. Because I have a large data set that includes uh, uh, um, uh, some generations of passwords belonging to a lot of people. And according to the password policy, uh, the password has to be changed every 90 days. And what I'm interested in for you to, to, to do to create for me is a small program that will look for users where the password today is the same as like one month ago, but the password last set date and time has been updated since 30 days ago, because then there's some trickery going on. And this colleague of mine, he was looking at me like, what do you mean? Well, I'm wondering if there are anybody that every time they need to change their password, because we have a history parameter set, saying that you're not allowed to use like the 10 last passwords. <coughs> I'm interested in finding evidence of people, every time they need to change their password, they would change it like 10 times right there and then and go back to the same password they're always using. And it was blood luck because my colleague, his face turned absolutely red <laughs> and said, there's at least one who does that. And I've told this story to a lot of different audiences. And the fun thing is that approximately half the audience would go like, ha, 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 that's so stupid. And the other half would go like, well, that was your actual good idea. <laughs> <laughs> and I've thought about that one before. There you go. That's the story. Right, so that was the second, uh, second main reason for, for doing these sequence changes. Of course, all the other ones are valid as well. You change your girlfriend or your dog dies or something like that. Uh, well, uh, oh yeah, I was told by someone uh, at the previous conference, maybe it was Marcus, uh, that you needed quotes uh, in a presentation for it to be valid. Uh, so I found one here that might actually match. Um, you, you guys have probably heard this before. Uh, you probably have never heard that name before, mm -hmm. uh, but it's actually the guy that wrote it in a book. Uh, he went by the name of George, really. <laughs> but you can imagine, I'm thinking like, imagine having book signings with that name, and uh, you get through maybe three books before lunch. Well, anyway, <laughs> this doesn't really work with password history because it's the opposite. If you remember the past, you will repeat it because you'll create a new password that looks almost identical. So yeah, uh, the other item I needed to uh, include in the presentation was kittens. So here's one. Well, I'm missing stuff here. Why don't you just leave your computer up? I could, but then I can't see you. Does it work? Ow. But that doesn't have any, anything to do with remember, remembering it, does, does it? Because if you just choose the same passwords over again, it's just behavior, isn't it? It's the path of least resistance, I think. So anyway, uh, as I was looking at this, I, I, I kept wondering, uh, is there a way to measure the quality of password history? Uh, so this was just at a, at a you know, thought stage at, at that point. Uh, so I decided maybe I should try to calculate the difference between each generation of passwords and how would I go about that. And uh, maybe the average dis difference would be a good measurement for, for, uh, for this. Uh, 
So that's about as far as I thought, because I'm lazy, like everybody else, and uh, I went and implemented it. So I looked around for a, for a, a kind of algorithm for this, and obviously Levenstein, distance metrics, which is like, uh, it's, a, it's a nearly 50-year-old algorithm invented by a guy called Vladimir Levenstein. Uh, it basically calculates the minimum number of single character edit operations that you need uh, to change or <coughs> transform one string into another. Uh, the operations are insert, delete, and substitute. Uh, so I tried this, implemented it. It was a fairly interesting <coughs> task. Cause it's, a, it's a nice little algorithm. It's, it's basically computer science 101. So it's, it's been a while since, uh, since I did that. So it's nice to go back to the roots. Uh, so I, I had a look at the various uh, the various passwords I found, and uh, back to our uh, Star Trek fan. Um, the difference between Obi Wan 08 and uh, 09 is just one single substitution. Uh, the difference between 09 and 10 is actually two substitutions, because you have to substitute 0 for 1 and 9 for 0. And then on to 11, that's another single substitution. And just for good measure, here's how it looks if you substitute a lot more. Uh, replace, substitute, delete. I don't know. It's a big matrix of what it does. So it's, it finds the shorts path. So that's n uh, a distance of nine, editing distance. Same as Marcus was talking about right yeah, earlier. So the average distance turned out to be just over one. <laughs> uh, mainly because of this thing here. <laughs> Because going from 09 to 10 happens to be a distance of 2 instead of 1. Um, so, OK, I thought. Uh, but there's, there might be m more interesting ways to calculate this. So I, so I thought about it a bit more. Um, and I figured that, well, maybe I should try to calculate the, the difference between patterns instead of passwords. So I did basically what they're doing in uh, Hashcat and the other cracking software. They make you know patterns for uh, for uh, hybrid attacks. So I transformed all uppercase characters to to uppercase U, lowercase to L, digits N, <coughs> special characters to S. And this is how you can predict the future. Because what happened then is that. Um, Obi Wan 08 became that pattern. I'm not going to read it because it sounds silly. Uh, 09 became that. 10 became that. 11 became that. And the average pattern's distance is zero. Which means that for patterns, this user is using exactly the same pattern for every password. Um, incidentally, this is uh, the th this was the third most popular pattern of all the passwords in this audit. Uh, the most pa popular one had an extra couple of Ns at the end. So I'm assuming that was the year with four digits. All right. Um, let's do some jumping to conclusions here. This is my favorite sport. These patterns are users' responses to password policies, clearly. I mean, uh, users are bloody lazy. They'll find the easiest way, the path of least resistance. Uh, they've th the minimum effort they can do to, to create a pattern that adheres to the policy, and they'll reuse it and reuse it and reuse it and reuse it. They change it as little as possible each time. You've all seen this. This is no surprise, right? Um, and this leads, obviously, to very predictable sequences. If you crack a single password, you can pretty much guess all future passwords, unless they break up with their girlfriend or they forget the password. Uh, rarely was it seen that they forgot the original sequence, had it reset, and then fell back into the original. Um, so yeah. So I was thinking, this uh, is a bit silly. We can't, we can't do this. This is uh, just, I mean, the, the, what is the point of having password security if, this, if it's that easy to predict? So I try to fix it. I try to find a way to, to improve this. Uh, but the question then is, how do we actually prevent users from forming patterns based on the policy? 
uh, is there anything we can do? And I was thinking and thinking and thinking. And, I was, and then suddenly, I don't know when, but at some point, I, uh, there was this one of these eureka moments. Change the policy every bloody time. <laughs> and it is quite obvious that this is how it has to be done. So I'm going to detour a bit into, uh, uh, into the world of cartoons for a bit. You've probably always uh, already seen this. I mean, this is old stuff. This is 1998. It's 15 years ago. This password policy is nothing compared to what we're using today. Correct? Well, we <laughs> squeal like a pig, he says. We'd be cheering if we had a, this simple password policy. So fast forward about seven years. This shows up. Oh, well, it's missing something. Now we're, <laughs> now we're more closer to what we're actually using today. Um, we're, do we're doing doodles. Android. Uh, Business, the pattern thing, that's doodles, basically. Sign language, I don't know. It is a, are we doing that? The Kinetics, passwords, maybe? I don't know. The levitating business man character from Unicode 7. That's it's, it's, it's a stretch, okay. But squirrel noises, that's clearly uh, voice recognition, right? Uh, so it's already here. But with, this is just simplistic stuff compared to what I uh, think is necessary. So it's basically going to be a new world order here. We are going to generate a new password policy on every password change. Uh, so this means we need to uh, generate, uh, we need to have a set of rules uh, on how these generate, how these individual policies are to be generated. So uh, there has to be like a policy of, about the policies or a, a meta policy. Uh, so enter the met password meta policy, which is basically a blog post I wrote three years ago. Um, back then I was just thinking out loud. I've gone a bit further this time. So to explain the meta policy, uh, the way I envision it, it could be done differently, uh, but you know this is one, one approach. I've set up two categories of rules. Um, one category is uh, are the non-volatile rules. They are the rules that are fixed. They're always going to be in the generated policy uh, and they're uh, uh, is something you will set on at, at the very beginning of starting to implement this. Uh, then you have the volatile rules. Uh, these are customized for each uh, individual policy. So here are some examples of non-volatile rules. Uh, the new generated policy must deviate from the previously generated policy on at least three points. Okay, that means we have to store this policy uh, for each time a user changes his password. That's, that's doable, it's impractical, but sure, we can do that. Um, the other thing is that I think most people can agree that most passwords suck anyway. So let's just reject <laughs> most of them. <laughs> on, on why 73%? I have no idea. I just picked it. Um, you can probably approach that number more closely with some statistics, but then you would have to actually implement a password quality metric, which, as far as I know, nobody has done properly. Uh, there are a billion different tr attempts. None of them work uh, properly, I think. So, um, right. Wouldn't that encourage sequencing? Just you wait. <laughs> <laughs> so, also, each uh, of the volatile policy rules um, only has a 73% chance of being included. So, sometimes there's a minimum password, sometimes there won't be a minimum, I'm sorry, minimum length, etc. Um, there could be other rules. This is just, you know, we can do, do a discussion later. Uh, so, the volatile rules, uh, which are uh, sort of the the interesting parts of the password policy. And, and keep in mind, I'm just talking about a single policy for a single user for a single password change. Um, <laughs> minimum password length, 
randomly chosen between 1 and 73. Someone pointed out that, well, I wouldn't have a password that had a minimum length of, of one character. Well, that's going to be addressed as well. So you can set the maximum password length. Why you would do that, I don't know. Pick or choose. Uh, it's not necessarily going to be included anyway. So yeah, next one. Uh, password must or maybe must not contain upper character, uh, case characters. Uh, same thing with lowercase uh, digits and uh, special characters. Now keep in mind that uh, only 73% of these are going to be included, or rather there's only a 73% chance that each one of these are going to be included in any given policy, so it's going to change around a bit. Uh, continued, um, well, there's another suggestion. Some percentage of <laughs> vowels. I mean, obviously, I, I was only thinking uh, Western languages where you have vowels, and I don't know what you got in Chinese and stuff. Were you born in 73? Uh, no, I wasn't. I have no idea why I ended up with 73, but 75 was too obvious. <laughs> Incidentally, I was born in 75. Good um, Well... <laughs> And the opposite, passwords must contain at least this percentage of consonants. Um, well, okay, so already now, if you're paying close attention, which I hope you are, you can spot a, a little niggle. What if that random number turns out to be 51 and 51? <laughs> Tough luck. <laughs> you won't be changing the password. No, actually, we should just regenerate uh, generate a new, um, we could re regenerate a new password policy or we could implement code that makes sure these uh, paradoxes or, or mutually exclusive rules uh, don't occur. Uh, right, another one and different characters. So even if you have a minimum length of one, if this rule kicks in and it's 18, then obviously the minimum length is going to be 18 anyway. Uh, yeah. Right, here's one that uh, this is a simple version of it. It must not match uh, a word or words found in, in some kind of dictionary, which you pr predefine. Uh, you have a list of dictionaries. You pick one, look into that. It might be, uh, you know, rock you passwords. It might be uh, Oxford, unabridged something, which would make it really tough. But okay. Um, also, if you have other, you, other kinds of information, I mean, if, if you, all you have is just you're going to change the password, then the, these are rules that work. But if you have more information about a user, like username, you have the password history, you have the username, email address, you can, of course, reference this and create rules that, uh, that um, well, based off of them. I, I have no idea what they sh would be, but, you know, real name, other personal information. You can do soundex, metaphone matching, uh, words that sound like other words are not allowed. You know, sound, this password sounds like a previous password. She talked about, you talked about password. Pardon? Janice, you talked about passwords that sound, uh, sounded like others or? or yeah, I mean, yeah, so it wasn't good enough to just type in passwords that were similar to your actual password. Right, so this prevents that. Uh, you could use rhyming dictionaries. Um, you can reference world events. You are not allowed to have uh, a password that contains uh, Ukraine, Thailand, Kiev, that kind of stuff. Uh, these are just, you know, thoughts and ideas. Famous dictators, stock indices. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm running out of ideas here. These are things that you can can base these rules off. Okay, so you think this is ridiculous, right? Well, I have proof of concept here. <laughs> and this is going to be a bit of those, um, a bit of audience participation, I think. Uh, let's see if we can actually uh, w make this work in some way. Uh, are you guys seeing this? Most of it. Most of it. Let's do. Oh, <laughs> uh huh. All right. So, what you're seeing here is an example of, of a. This is an example of a, of a policy. Uh, each policy has an idea, uh, just for reference, I guess. 
Um, what you're looking at now is one password policy, and it's it, it's uh, it, what I'm doing is checking a blank password. So. <laughs> So obviously, password must have a maximum length of 63 characters. That's, that works for a blank password. But a minimum length is 53. Um, not contain lowercase. That's easy. We don't have any characters at all. 9% vowels, 21% consonants. Should be doable. 40 different characters. E well, OK. So not lowercase. <laughs> uh, Where's the check for the second to last one? Oh, that's easy. Let's just start typing. What I, what I, I, I've done a, little, a lot of testing with this, and what I found works best is just mashing the keyboard. With, let's see what happens. So and, uh, just make your cat walk over. Yeah. That's cat. Or if you have kids. kids. <laughs> I have cats. I think cats work better. They don't destroy the keyboard. Uh, let's see if we can do this. Okay, 53 characters. We can do that. Uh, no lowercase, so we can do things like this. Must contain digits. Uh, 40 different characters. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. And how did the second to last one? <laughs> oh, it just rejects 73%. Oh, okay. uh, do we have more? <laughs> Is there anything else we can insert here? Uh, actually, I should. Uh, password sucks now, so. <laughs> oh, we can fix that. If you go back a couple of characters, it doesn't suck anymore. <laughs> oh, here we go. So, um, no, no. 40, different, 40 characters. different characters. And okay. Excluded lowercase. <laughs> <laughs> now we can start typing in Unicode, I guess. <laughs> Unicode stuff, yeah. You just hold the alt key and mash the keyboard to reason the job. Well, I, uh, oh, I should probably do this. Oh, there we go. No. Uh, <laughs> Want to see a little trick? <laughs> Ta da! Got it. What? Now you have to memorize it. Who yeah, said and that? You have to get a new one after three months. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, 58 days. <laughs> Who said anything about memorizing? This would be automatic if you read by your password manager. So, well, the password the manager memorizing the password isn't really my, my, uh, something I've considered here. Uh, <laughs> mainly because there are password managers. The main thing I wanted to avoid was uh, predictability of passwords. So, if we go and generate a new password policy. Let's see what happens to this one. So this is a new password policy. Suddenly the minimum length has changed, maximum length has changed. Uh, now it has to contain lower case and uppercase. <coughs> uh, it must not contain special characters, so we have to remove these. Hmm. Oh, and it must not match words found in the Rockview password list. What's the most popular one in Rockview? One, two, three, four, five, six. Well, let's see if that's actually there. Oh. <laughs> oh. Well, I noticed one, two is not a password in <laughs> Lucky List. All right. Um. <laughs> Well, it's a proof of concept. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what else? We have need 19 characters, so we can start with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Uh, so we got more than 19, right? It must contain an uppercase. 49% uh, consonants, so. At least it's not exactly 49% consonants. Thank you. Also have a ma maximum length. Oh dear. So now I need to do this. Ta-da! <laughs> so even if, so even if this uh, this seems impossible, it is actually possible to create passwords that match this. Uh, you will need the live feedback, otherwise you're lost. Um, is this yeah? Uh, if you're not supposed to remember it, can't your web page just generate one that matches? Shush. <laughs> <laughs> no, because you can make your password manager generate. Uh, 
sequences as well, so that's what I want to avoid. Okay. Uh, is this a decent password? No. Not, I'm, uh, ignore the human aspect. <laughs> is this something you would crack? Would you run this through a... Yeah, they are. What, uh, what does John use? It's so long, yeah. <laughs> would, this, would this be crackable? Uh, okay, so so it appears that I've, I've managed two things. The one thing is um, actually three things. Uh, the first thing is to avoid patterns. Uh, users are no longer able to create predictable patterns. The second one is I've, I've well this. This all depends on how you set up your meta policy, of course, but um, it appears that it is very easy to achieve passwords that are very hard to guess. And the third thing I've managed to do is alienate my users uh, <laughs> severely. But I'm hoping uh, there'll be some kind of, you know, Stockholm syndrome thing going on here. So <laughs> after a while, they'll get used to it. All right. Should we try another one? Yeah. Or you oh, get yeah. that? I just. Delete this one and yeah, there's one of them. Fewer rules this time. Uh, any suggestions how to start? Well, we we'll just continue with other stuff. So it's too short. We need a digit. 36 different characters. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's just the alphabet twice. Yeah, Upper and lower. Any restrictions on case? Upper case and lower case. Yeah, we can do something like uh, uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Oh, uh, I'm lost. <laughs> X, Y, Z, and then A, B, C, D, E, F, G. What is it? H I J K L. Oh, hey! <laughs> That's a decent password, isn't it? And no special characters. No need for that. Only one digit. I think that one. You can remember it. Huh? <laughs> this is incidentally the Welsh spelling of your name. No. <laughs> All right. Um, so let's see if we can go back to the presentation. Oh, hey! It worked. Right, so obviously I am. This isn't a practical uh, approach to anything. But this is unfortunately the way we seem to be heading unless we find a different method of, of handling passwords, which circles nicely around to Pico uh, or any other kind of password manager. The thing is that passwords aren't bad. They're keys and if we just ignore the fact that we need to remember them we can generate passwords that are huge and random and they would be great but for the fact that we need to remember them so that's about it for me if anybody is interested in actually implementing a, a real version of this um, I can surely help but I don't think you'd be making any money from it Questions? Yes? I'm, s I'm failing to get what your conclusion is. It's um, <laughs> like, what would you recommend? Uh, Janice is failing to, to get what my conclusion is. Um, well, I don't have that much of a conclusion. More, it's more of a uh, you know, writing on the wall kind of thing. What's the writing on the wall? The writing on the wall is that this is where we're heading with a current password policy uh, Regimes and Are that you kind of stuff. Am I suggesting work like heck to find a different solution? Like For instance, yes. <laughs> Which is what I said if you had paid attention. <laughs> 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 Anyone else? Yeah. Would you mind speaking up a bit? Yeah. Uh, how's it like from 
Oh, uh, you're okay. So the question is, is how, how does this work from a usability point of view? It doesn't. Uh, yeah, and you should ignore it. Uh, but uh, you do tend to get a bit emotionally invested in the password board you're creating, so it might actually be easier to remember because you worked so hard to create it. <laughs> yeah? Uh, back in, in, uh, in Las Vegas, uh, when we did the password call there, one of, uh, one of the many, many interesting discussions that we had there during uh, the afternoon and the evening and, and late night and very early morning again, uh, was related to something as simple as from a usability perspective, it is a good thing to display the password policy and the full password policy before the user starts entering, entering the password that they are supposed to create for a given service. But in many cases, the provider will not show you anything, any requirement for the password bef before you start typing. So you will start typing one, two, three, four, five, six, and then they will tell you, no, you need characters as well. And then you will do one, two, three, four, five, six, and then they tell you, oh, you need an uppercase as well, and thus revealing parts of the policy for every step you take. From a usability standpoint, I think that's stupid. Uh, but our discussions was also that not only should we display the full password on screen, but perhaps we should, to UBAS, maybe to the guys creating HTML or somebody else, Maybe we should also suggest that the password policy requirements is also in some way embedded in the web page so that a password manager or any kind of software can read the given requirements, both minimum requirements and also the maximum restrictions that you have for passwords, so that a password manager or any other software can create the best possible password randomized for that service. And that's pretty much the entire discussion. I was like, yeah, that's a good idea, but uh, who do we call? Ghostbusters? Don't know. How do you securely store that password uh, anyway? Hmm? How do you securely store that password? It has to be in the data or something? No, this would be the policy. Yeah, this is just the password policy, the requirements for a password. When you are creating yourself a new account, not only should you display the password requirements on screen, but the requirements should also be in the, in the, in the uh, embedded in the HTML, HTML code so that the password manager software can read those and generate a password for you. There was a question up here first. I'm sorry, speak up, please. Did you try the um, auto-generated password by password manager against the uh, five forces? Put into this? Yeah. No, so I didn't. You want the separated for the password? That's an interesting experiment. <laughs> <laughs> try different password, ma password managers to see if they will actually succeed. In yeah, the problem is that password managers are, are rather limited. I mean, you can say include well, you can say include or exclude. Yeah, maybe you could you could maybe manage to do it. Yeah. I haven't seen any Unicode, and I, I haven't seen any password managers that will generate random Unicode 6.0 passwords for you. Or 7. Why not? I'm not supposed to remember them anyway. And they tend to generate yeah. anyway. The application will fail when they just display something. And as Amos are saying as well, password managers today, they will create a fixed length uh, password for you. And most probably it would be the default value of whatever password manager you are using. That could be, at some point, that could also be a you know, problem or weakness to you. Yes, how far away are we from having a voicemail, um, a, a, not a voicemail, but voice recognition? so that people could just say any word, you know, of anything, and then that would be their password or entry into something. The question is how, how far away are we from voice recognition as a login or a yes, authentication yes, method? Yes, For example, for example, in the future, a lot of people are probably going to even be investing in, in things like bitcoins, if the dollar is going to go away at some point. And in the future? 
<laughs> I'm, I'm being sarcastic. You know, it's, got, it's doing quite well at the moment, but you know, it's going to be another, yep. you know, hefty mode of transport. Uh, uh, the technology is already here. Yeah. Uh, it's, well, it's not that expensive either, is it? But, uh, well, yeah, he has, obviously has it on his phone. Uh, it's it's being implemented as we speak uh, mm -hmm. in very yeah. on various platforms. Yeah. So but how secure is it? Yeah. That's a different uh, that's that's another question. story. The, the most, I mean, the, the most practically uh, secure uh, biometric is what, uh, vein pattern recognition or something? The other I'm ones sure are just... If it's iris scan or uh, not vein pattern recognition. Iris scan is, is low on the... On the uh, no, no, you're correct. And also, the attack vector wouldn't be <laughs> trying to replicate the, the the vein pattern. It would be attacking the chain between. Uh, so it's it's largely irrelevant in that matter. No, um, that's the problem. We don't really have a good alternative to passwords right now. Uh, maybe when Pico is done, I don't know. Or. It will be another no step. <laughs> Yeah. This is a, a more of a comment that uh, when your users adapt your, your meta policy, perhaps you're going to need a, a meta meta policy to generate meta policy. <laughs> I'm <laughs> not saying no, don't that. Feed it. Don't feed it. <laughs> don't, don't, don't feed it. I'm not saying that uh, multi level policies are out of the question. Yes, that's. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Obvious question. When will this uh, proof of concept be available online for people to try out? <laughs> If you want to try out this particular version uh, later tonight, if necessary. Uh, yeah, we need that, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. How hard could we, would you be if somebody actually memorized the password? <laughs> to come it? Not at all. I mean, people memorize thousands of digits of pi or any other constant, so there's going to be some. What people? <laughs> what people? <laughs> Very special people, I'll tell you about that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, only no, uh, they're not necessarily Mensa members. Uh, uh, they're w rather what you call savants or something like that. Yeah. Um, the ability to, m she can probably elaborate on this, but the ability to memorize stuff is not linked to the IQ. Correct? Sorry, I got talked to my Yeah, all right. Sorry, crosstalk. Sorry. Never mind. <laughs> I'm done. Any one other questions? Yeah. Yeah. Just uh, you said, okay, we use the password manager, but uh, which password do you put in your password manager? I used to come paste that into the password manager. No, in fact, but uh, you protect your password manager. Oh, yeah, that one. So <laughs> yeah, the password of the password manager? Well, you have a different uh, authentication server, obviously deploying uh, MetaPass for policies as well. <laughs> well, a Raspberry Pi. Uh, you, you're, you're talking about the determination of trust kind of thing, uh, uh, where, where there's a bug stop or something. Yeah, uh, that'll be an ex another talk. Yep. Do you know anyone who uses Pi as their password? <laughs> they use Pi. Oh, yeah. We've seen that. Hmm? We've seen. Or the like just Pi numbers or some other digit. Digits of Pi. Lots of people do. Seen that yeah. several times. Yeah. 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 I think they've seen that. Yeah. Actually, what I, I, this is anecdotal <laughs> evidence again, but I've heard people uh, just moving out one step further into the, the, the decimals for each iteration, right? So that's predictable. <laughs> uh, actually, one, one peculiar thing about that, I don't know why, but I've, I've actually seen several places that they particularly use 12 or 13 digits of pi for some reason. I don't know why 12 or 13, but... That's what they could remember, I guess. Yeah, yeah something like that. Uh, there's it, uh, there was a couple of... There are some... Uh, uh, memory rules for remembering digits of pi, uh, like years or something like that. Uh, I guess some of them stop at 12 or 13 digits. Anyway. We're pretty good at remembering uh, years, four digit yeah. years, because we don't remember the digits, we remember the year. Uh, so I guess you could split it up like that. Are there some of these 
when they talk about, for example, remembering the digits of pi, they're trying to make it sweet. Apparently, that's easy to remember. Okay. A lot of these, uh, when I've read it in these papers, that they used to be. I don't know. I can only remember what six digits, and one of them is three. So. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, one more question, and I will say thank you to your colleague.